This video is sponsored by PCBWay. What you're looking at here is a breadboard which has got some super caps on the outside. They've been charged up to around 3 volts and cradled in here is a Paduk PFS154. The PFS154 has three separate PWM channels. So I've just programmed this up to be pootling along at 18 kilohertz, which is incredibly slow. And at three volts, it's barely using any juice. And what we're looking at here is hopefully a pretty good emulation of a candle. The thing that I've been asking myself lately is, can I do a better candle if I have some separation of the LEDs in the same way that I've got them here? These are three millimeter LEDs. But I, if I put some 1206s on here, uh, then I should be able to get a good sort of three-dimensional flame effect. The other thing that uh, I'm keen to do is to try out what happens when, let's say, one of these is orange, one is white, and one is yellow. Does it provide a more realistic candle effect? So I'm going to solder up, I think, this one here. This is the stable jewel thief, which is in the configuration ready for a paduk. And uh, we'll also solder up some LEDs to this, and we'll hook them up and see how it looks. Well, stage one is complete. I've soldered up the board provided by PCB Way, and you can see the orange, and then in the middle we've got the white, and on the side we've got the yellow. They're all on their different PWM journeys because that's the way I've programmed it from the PFS 154. And there's a couple of things I'd like to try to see which configuration is going to work. One thing is to firstly provide some sort of uh, diffuser over the top, so it would look something like this. And what that is, is, is it sort of diffuses the light and it's more closely simulating the uh, bottles or jars that I uh, end up putting these things in. And the second thing I'd like to do is to swap the, uh, the leads going to the GPIOs on the Paduk so that different PWM profiles uh, are assessed to see which one is going to work in this scenario with the different uh, coloured LEDs. So let's do that. So what I'll do is I'll just swap the LED, uh, swap the leads. Uh, well, it's effectively swapping the LEDs, uh, getting different PWM profiles, and then seeing which one we like the best. Well, I'm not sure what I've learned from this experiment. These are the six possible configurations with the different PWM channels. I think a couple of things emerge. One is the white light overpowers everything else. So I think I'm going to actually reconfigure what we can see in terms of the light. And I think I might make it orange in the middle and then two yellows on the outside, and that'll become a little less frantic. I think also the PWM is a little bit slow. And, uh, and so I'll uh, change that as well. And apart from that, I think, you know, there's not enough difference really. The only thing I got was from number three, a sense that it was a, a pretty good combination. But anyway, that is the uh, experiment of the, all the different PWM channels. Let's uh, rewire those LEDs and have another look at it. I think we're uh, almost ready to go. Um, I'll just turn the lights off so we can see what's going on here. Uh, this is the original combination of yellow, yellow, yellow. So having tried all sorts of different combinations of reds, oranges, yellows, whites, I've gone back to these lovely yellow ones. I guess the advantage of this is that it's, you know, I've been able to do all the experimentation. I think that's pretty important. But we're down to this sort of PCB where now we can get this sort of flame separation I'm looking for. So I'm pretty happy actually after that whole process. I've also got a 250 farad uh, capacitor in there, which is pretty astonishing. So that's been uh, chugging away for a few hours now. All I need to do is to solder up the, um, the stable jewel thief. Let me just put some light on the subject. And uh, what I want to do is uh, solder this up and connect those two up and, uh, and then we're good to go. Now, I mean, we've seen this solder up a million times. So all I'm going to do is do the magic where just wave my arm over it and the soldered one will appear. That's what's supposed to happen anyway. Let's see how we go. Oh, wow. I don't believe that stuff actually works. Saves a hell of a lot of time, too. All right, so uh, let's bring the uh, the light back in. All we need to do is to marry these two up. 
Uh, this guy providing power via the stable dual thief to the Paduk, output it to the three separated LEDs now. Uh, I love it when a plan comes together. Have a nice little jar to put this one in. There's been a bit of an issue with this variety of supercapacitor. So this is 3. Uh, I think 8 volts and 250 farads. And what's happening is that the charging profile means that the QX5252 isn't putting out enough voltage to uh, to charge us correctly, which is a bit of a shame. So you can put it in front of sunlight for a day, if you like, and, uh, and what comes out of this is maybe about half an hour of light, which is not ideal. So I think I'll go back to the 2.7 volt versions or indeed back to nickel metal hydride until I can work out some way of making these two talk to each other. I've been looking at voltage doubling circuits and all sorts of weird and wonderful things, but in the in the meantime, uh, I'll just package up this version of the uh, the project, which has these three separated um, LEDs. They look pretty cool. Let's go into the dark and have a quick look. The iPad's having trouble focusing on it, which is actually not such a bad thing because you can see a little bit the uh, the dancing side to side that you would normally see with a, a real flame and that's exactly the effect that I was going for. It is put more pronounced with the uh, with the naked eye so it's a pretty good result. Uh, I'll package the whole thing up in a glass jar uh, and uh, put a solar little solar panel on the top and hopefully that uh, that new super cap the 250 farad one, will uh, allow it to, uh, to, to go like this all night. You can always adjust the brightness um, and, uh, you know, fiddle around with a, a little bit in the code as well, um, which I probably will, uh, because a project like this I don't think is ever finished. Very interesting that the use of other LEDs didn't really work out. It, it really is the, uh, the yellow one which uh, is providing the best result. So that is the circuit working for this week. And we'll catch you next time.